Well, it's April the 14th, 2016, and this is Christmas because of this little box right here. This is the MTR 5B, and I'm going to open this sucker up. Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB, and I'm sorry, but I couldn't wait for you to open this thing. I'm like a kid at Christmas. I had to rip it open and see what was in here, but I'll show you what was in here. Uh, a grocery store ad from North Carolina. A uh, nice bubble wrap to keep everything safe. Uh, it was taped inside this plastic pouch to keep it dry. You got a 1.7 millimeter uh, power cable. Same thing as the FT817 Yezu radio uses. Same thing as the MTR3B uses. And you get a piece of paper that says, go online to our website and uh, get the instruction manual from there. And that's what came in the box. So that's pretty cool. But you know, this is the star of the show here. This is the new Mountain Topper MTR-5B, the big brother to the MTR-3B. Now, um, Steve Weber designed this radio, same person who designed the 3B, same person who designed the Appalachian Trail Sprint series of radios. Steve Weber is a genius, in my opinion. I've never met him, but I hope to. Uh, l &R Precision is the company behind this who's producing these radios. And uh, when they put this thing on sale, Two weeks ago, Friday, um, I was one of 10 people that bought one, 10 people that were able to buy one. They released five, they sold out in minutes. They put five more out there, those sold out in minutes. And I'm not saying that I got one because I was refreshing my browser with the frequency of a chimp on crack. I'm not saying that, but I was. So I was really lucky to get this. And uh, you probably saw my last video about the MTR3B. If you thought I was enthusiastic about this radio, which I was, take that to the next level for this radio. <laughs> this radio is so cool. Uh, I've made some notes about the things that are better about this radio than the MTR3B, which is still a great radio, and I still love it. I'm not selling mine. Um, but let me just kind of tell you some things about this radio that are improved over, over the little brother here. Well, it costs $120 more. You can't say that's an improvement, but for $120, you get an awful lot more. Uh, you get two bands. This has three bands, 40, 30, and 20. This has 17 meters and 15 meters added to that. So you get all five bands there. Um, this one's a little bigger. You know, you can see that, but it's not a monster. You know, this thing is just ridiculously small, and this thing is nearly ridiculously small. Uh, it's only like uh, a half inch wider less than an inch deeper this way, a fraction of an inch taller. So it's not a big, not a big change in size and you get a lot more for your money. Um, this only weighs two ounces more than the MTR3B. Uh, this one has a built-in 24 hour clock that's battery backed up with a little three volt coin cell. So you can use that to display uh, UTC time on here on the display to help you with your logging or you can just have, make it say your local time if that's what you want to do. One great improvement is um, there's a BNC jack, antenna jack back here. The MTR3B had an RCA jack, which is you know kind of funny. And you had to use an adapter to adapt this to BNC or an SO239, unless you had a specially made antenna with an RCA jack on it already. So I like that. Uh, the specs say that this radio only draws 15 milliamps of current at 12 volts. Now the specs say this one draws like 34 milliamps. This is already silly, miserly. It's, it's still kind of hard for me to believe that the specs are right, that this is actually 15 milliamps of, of power is all that's being drawn. That's insane, that's amazing. Um, there are solder pads on the board and there's firmware support already for a rotary encoder. So if you want to buy a rotary encoder with quadrature outputs, drill a hole here. You can put an encoder here and it, the radio will already use it. So you'll have a VFO knob. If you remember from this radio, you have to use the up and down arrows to tune, which is fine. It works great. But uh, you can add a VFO knob if you want to by just adding a rotary encoder to the board. But there's also another trick that was added to the firmware of this one. So if you press up and down arrows to tune, you're moving 50 hertz at a time. 
If you hold one of the up and down arrows, it moves to 100 hertz steps, about 10 times a second, about 1K per second. But while you're holding that button down, if you push the opposite button down at the same time, it starts taking off fast. So you can really get some fast tuning. So if you're up at the top of the band and you want to go down to the middle of the band, you don't have to sit there and just, you know, whistle the Jeopardy song. You can just push down arrow and then push the other one and it just starts zooming down there so you get there quickly. Of course, it's still got the direct frequency entry mode so you can type it, you know, key it in from the paddles if you want to. Um, it's pretty obvious that this has a uh, liquid crystal display. There's an LCD display here. If you remember, this little radio just has a single LED digit display. So if you want to know what the frequency is, you had to push this button and then watch it, you know, just tell you one digit at a time. Whereas this LCD display has four lines of text on it. And the frequency is always available to, to, to see. So it's really nice. Here, you know, you might find yourself having to push this button and then just kind of watch and count it to find out what frequency you're on. But you always know with this, which is a, to me a great improvement. Matter of fact, having this screen here improves the radio in a lot of ways because Steve was able to, to put some menu choices and things on the screen instead of having to kind of remember what they were and push this, then that, and then all kinds of gyrations maybe for this, uh, which still is easy. And there's a little diagram that shows you what to do and it's no big deal. But this is a lot easier to use. So there's frequency on the screen all the time, told you that. Battery voltage is just shown all the time on the screen here. You've got the time, uh, UTC or local time here that's on the screen. Um, it shows you the current CW keyer speed. Now on this radio, there was no way for you to know what speed. All you know is that when you turn the radio on, it's 20 words a minute. And you can push and hold function until you hear the S for speed. And then push the down arrow to go slower, push the up arrow to go faster. But you don't know, unless you're counting the punches, how, how much you're touching it, you don't know what the speed is, whereas it's shown all the time on the screen here. So that's a really nice improvement. Um, in RIT mode, uh, it actually shows you the, the offset frequency here. So if you hold down RIT to go into RIT mode, you can just use the up and down arrow keys and see how far off you are from, uh, you know, from where you were tuned. So that's kind of neat. Um, while you're programming a message, this will show you the Morse code that your keyer is keen, that your paddles are keying, and if you make a mistake, um, you can actually press the down arrow and just kind of backspace to go correct something. That is much improved over the way that you program messages on this radio. But again, I hate to say anything bad about this radio because it's still awesome and you're not getting this one. I'm not selling this. Um, so there's a lot of cool things that it does better. Um, little stuff. I'm like, on this radio, to change the keyer speed, you know, you hold this button down until you hear the -da 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 S, which doesn't take long. I mean, it's just, it's the first menu option, actually. But on this radio, you just push the function one time. And as soon as you push function one time, instead of holding it, you immediately are able to change the, change the keyer speed. Um, little things. I mean, you can, on this radio, if you are got paddles connected and you hear somebody calling CQ, SKCC or something and you want to go to straight key mode, you've got to turn the radio off and either plug in a mono jack into this with your straight key or hold down the, the DA paddle uh, of, your, of your key, or your paddles, while you turn the radio back on in order to go into straight key mode. Here, there's, a, there's just an option to, to push a button to turn it into straight key mode. So, you know, that's a small thing, but it keeps you from having to recycle the power of the radio and, and bring it back up again. So uh, those are my notes on the things that are different, improved. Um, let's hook it up so you can take a look at it, um, take a listen to it, and then uh, I'll kind of talk you through some of the things. I'm not going to show you everything there is to know about this. The manual's great. And if you've seen this video, you already know everything this radio can do. And this does all of that and a little bit more but it does it in an easier way. So let's, uh, let's hook it up to an antenna and take a look. Okay, I've got the camera set up on this now and uh, gonna turn the thing on. We're on 20 meters and uh, we know that because the way these switches are set, let me talk about that real quick. So there are six switches. If these three switches are set to the left, it's 40 meters. If there are all three switches are, set, switches are set to the middle, that's 30 meters. And if all three switches are set to the right, 
that takes on whatever these three switches are set to. So right now, all three of these switches are set to the left, which is 20 meters. If I move them in the center position, I'll be on 17 meters. And if I move these three switches to the right, I'll be on 15 meters. So because I've got these three set to the right, it defers to these three switches. And these are set to all the way to the left. So we're on 20 meters. When I turn the radio on, you're going to hear uh, the, the Morse code for two, which means we're on 20 meters. Here we go. Okay, hopefully you heard that. I've got an external speaker connected, but it wasn't very loud. So uh, this is what the display looks like. It's a liquid crystal display. And you can see at the top is the current frequency, 14.056. Uh, and bottom left is telling you that our keyer right now is set to 20 words a minute. The uh, time in UTC is displayed at the bottom row in the center. And on the right-hand side, you can see that my little battery pack uh, is at 10.4 volts right now. You probably remember from the other video from the MTR3B that you tune this thing by using the up and down arrow buttons. Uh, pressing one time will raise the frequency by 50 hertz. Pressing the down arrow lowers the frequency by 50 hertz. Holding one of these arrows changes the frequency in, in about 10 steps of 100 hertz per second, so about 1K per second. And as I hold this button down, you'll see the number on the right-hand side of the frequency display incrementing. One really cool thing that they've done is that opposite button uh, fast tuning mode. So I'm gonna hold down the down arrow. Right now we're set at 14.060. I'm gonna hold the, the down arrow, and then I'm gonna touch the other arrow at the same time. And watch how fast we start flipping through the band here. So we're already down to 14.015. You cannot do that on the other radio. The MTR3B doesn't have that uh, quick tune mode. So you're limited to just the 1K per second. Um, what else should I show you? Um, let's find a station. And I want to show you how RT, uh, RIT works. Let me get back up to the busy part of the band. Well, there was one. Go back and find him. Okay, here's our side tone pitch. So I really can't zero beat him. I'm kind of he's kind of halfway between me. Uh, I'm going to hold down RIT. Now we're in RIT mode. You can see on the second line the uh, the offset frequency. Right now it's at zero 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 zero. I'm going to press the up arrow. You can see that it shows me the difference. And if I want to toggle back over to the, the, the transmit frequency, I can just press function. The display says R equals T to let me know that I'm not in the RIT anymore. I'm actually listening on the actual frequency. So I'm going to press to get back out of this. So now I'm back in RIT mode, listening up 100 hertz. And I'm going to get out of RIT mode just by holding down RIT. Okay, so now we're back down to where we were. That's how that works. Um, what else should I show you? Well, I want to show you the configuration stuff. I'm going to turn the speaker down for a second. Okay. So uh, in the other radio, you held down the function key and, and it stepped through all the menu, the config menu choices. And that's, that's still how it works now, but um, it's just faster. So if I, if I uh, press function, it's going to let me adjust my CW speed. So uh, you can see it says adjust K speed. And now with the down arrow, you can see at the bottom left-hand corner, it's going down to 16 words a minute, 15, 14, and so on. So I can just, instead of having to hold this until I hear S, I just press it one time, and now I can change, uh, change that. If I want to look at the other configuration menus, I'll just hold this down or, or press it. Sorry, hold it down. So there's direct frequency entry. Now, one thing, if there's a con, uh, it's that the other radio, the MTR3B, would let you use shortcut. So uh, if I wanted to key in, if I wanted to go to 060, I could put in T6T, whereas this radio makes you key in the whole zero. Now you don't do it that often, so it's not that big a deal, but I, you know, I just want to pass that along. That is one difference that's not positive for a change, but it's a minor thing, so it's no big a deal. Uh, there is some interesting stuff here though. So like you can press this button to the load button to go back down to the bottom of the band. Um, you can press the RE button. Let me go back to that mode here. 
You could press the RE button to reset if you're entering some digits from your paddle and you screw that up and you want to uh, restart, start over again, you can do that. Uh, when you finish keying in the frequency that you want to get to, you have to press the load button. Now on the other radio, the MTR3B, you didn't have to do that. As soon as you keyed in the last digit, it would just switch to that frequency and then enunciate the frequency in Morse code. Here, you key in the frequency and then you have to press load for it to go to that. Otherwise, you can hit function to go to exit without changing the frequency you're on. So that is a difference in the other radio. So that's direct frequency entry. Let's go to the next one, which is entering messages. Okay, they've totally changed the way you enter messages now on this radio, but it's for the better. And I'm not going to bother to do this for you, it's really simple. But you can key in the message you want. It's going to show you the Morse code uh, while you're doing it. And then you can, well, heck, I'm going to do it for you. So here we are. I'm just going to key in my call sign. So it's N4CCB. Turn up my speaker so I can hear myself, my side tone. Now see how it, it screwed up there? I screwed up. I'm going to hit the down arrow. I'm going to start over again. Okay, I did a V. That's not good. Notice how I can back up with uh, this right, this up arrow key. So that's nice. Yeah, they give you the ability to back up one character at a time and fix things. And when there's enough time has elapsed for a word space, it shows you an asterisk here. Uh, so you'll know that you've you know, waited enough time to enter the next word or phrase. So this is really cool. And you can press the CK button to check back that message, listen to it again. Okay, and if you're happy with that, then you can just touch the, uh, the button that you want to use to uh, save this to. So I'm going to put it on the M3, the last one. Okay, so now I've stored that and I'm, I'm uh, ready to enter more messages if I want. I'm going to go ahead and press exit. So that's how entering messages works. It's much, much improved over the, the previous one. And it does beacon mode, and you can look in the manual and see some other things. I'm going to go ahead and show you the next one, which is tune. There's DFE, message, and tune. Okay, when I'm in tune mode here, I can just press the left button of the paddle, the, the, dit, the you know, dot paddle, uh, to go into tune mode. And then I can touch the, the dash side of the paddle to, to cancel that. Uh, there's nothing really exciting about this, so I'm not going to bother doing it. Okay, code speed, direct frequency entry, message, tune, and setting time is next. In this case, it's just like entering a message. You enter uh, the digits for what the current time is, and then you save that. And, you know, I elected to use UTC. You can use your local time if you want to. I'm going to exit out of that. Uh, the, the battery, the clock here is backed up with a little coin cell. So uh, it's going to remember the time for a long time with, with the radio turned off. So that's kind of nice. And the last thing is the config. So there's cure speed, direct frequency entry, message, tune, time, and config. There are a few things here that you can, that you can set. Um, the radio remembers everything that you set. And uh, you know, if you remember how the other one works, the MTR3B, you can set the frequencies that you want as default frequencies for, for each band, and it'll remember that. You can set the, the code speed, the, the Morse code speed for your keyer that you want. And when you store that, then uh, next time you turn the radio on, it'll, it'll restore all those as defaults. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I really don't want to keep making this video much longer. It's, it's just, uh, I just kind of want to show you a little bit about it. So let's go find some more stations. Turn the speaker on. Again, you can easily tell what your side tone pitch is for zero beating by just pressing the function key. It goes into Morse code speed, adjust, speed adjustment, but it, it plays you the side tone. So now I'm pretty much zero beat with that guy. But, you know, like the other radio, you can kind of hear the signals jumping out at you. Uh, it's very selective. And uh, I'd say probably it's got a filter width of maybe, you know, 500 hertz or something like that. But um, I think I've probably showed you enough. I could just keep going and, uh, and work a bunch of stations, but you know, you know that's going to work. <laughs> Matter of fact, my first station that I worked when I, when I got this thing turned on was Morocco. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. I think that's a good omen and uh, that I'm going to have a lot of fun with this radio. So by now you probably want one. 
Well, they made a hundred of them and they sold 10. They're holding some back for Dayton in uh, about five weeks from now. And they're having to ship some to Europe uh, for Kanga to sell. But they've already got a bigger production run going, so they're gonna have more. So uh, I think right now they're taking your name on an email list and then they're gonna open up probably some, some pre-selling pretty soon and start selling them you know, in the order that you put your name in. So uh, highly recommended. You know, I'm very enthusiastic about this radio. Having those extra two bands is really cool. Having the display uh, that lets you always see the frequency you're on uh, and what Morse code, you know, CW speed you're on, that's great. Uh, there's so many cool things about this, and uh, I want to thank Steve Weber for doing what he does and the LNR Precision folks for making this available to us. So I guess that's about it for this video. I hope you have fun and get your hands on one of these as soon as you can, and maybe we'll uh, talk on the air. So take care.